Buskin really, the genealogy of that word is a, a Basque word and it means to seek. Buskin means to seek and certainly musically in many, many other ways, Buskin has been a kind of seeking for me. I've been busking um, for a long time now, or it seems like a long time. And I think it's close to about 15 years now. And I haven't done it like continuously for 15 years, but I started about 15 or 16 years ago. Every day is different. It's a different kind of pulse each day, whether it's a Saturday or a Tuesday or a wet Wednesday morning. There's a different kind of ambience and different texture to each day. And the biggest challenge to the busker is the ability to, to respond musically to, to that uh, atmosphere, you know? And that's been the biggest sort of education for, in music for me, is, is trying to be receptive to that response. Something about Grafton Street as a place to be uh, as a human being. It's, you know, an aggressively capitalistic, wealthy street that's full of all sorts of people. And we're talking about you know, people that are on high wages, high rollers, people from all over the world, people that might be coming out of a methadone clinic, people cleaning the street, people policing the street, security guards, American tourists, groups of Italians, Spanish. You're on the street where there's an awful lot of activity. There's an awful lot of... The whole world is kind of on the street, up and down this, this very small, simple street in Dublin. And you go out to a street like that and you start to play music. And that's quite a naked experience. So what do you expect from that activity of playing music in front of all these transient people? It's a great communication because they don't have to stop, they don't have to listen, they don't have to engage, they don't have to put money in the case. Of course, it's not all about that. They don't have to do anything, but yet they do. They stop whatever they're doing. They, they might put down their cell phones for two minutes or they might film you and not even look at you. But somehow they engage in this thing that has nothing to do with what that street's about. It has nothing to do with commerce or shops or selling or advertising. They engage in this uh, kind of strange activity that you're sharing a song or a piece of music or an idea or a lyric in the middle of their busy lives, you know. I find that fascinating. You kind of puncture their reality with a bit of your reality. You just arrive spontaneously and play. And there's a conversation that happens between the artist and between the transient people who walk by. Buskin to me is kind of a, a phenomenon because of that. It's an act of faith. It's about believing in some kind of potential and some kind of possibility, something that's unseen, some kind of unseen communication between you and strangers. And I think there's a great beauty in that. You can take 10 paces and you might hear an accordion and then 10 paces down you might hear a ballad and for the 15 paces you'll hear a fiddle and then a banjo or a cajon. You, you know, you're going to hear this, this soundtrack to, to uh, to city life. I, th I think that really adds something to the world. It's not just simply about going out there to make a few quid or to try and promote anything. There's nothing for sale when I busk, for instance. There's nothing, I don't have a CD for sale. I don't have anything planned. I do a lot of improvisation. Some days I don't play so well at all. And some days I play stuff that I couldn't have dreamt of playing in here on my own. So. I really honour busking as a form of being in the world and communicating something that I can't figure out to people that I don't know. I find there's a great beauty and mystery in that. Now, I can also say there's been very hard times out there. There's been times where, you know, you don't have your rent and you don't have much self-esteem and it's raining and you don't feel so good about yourself or 
you know, there's been dark times for me on Grafton Street and they've lasted for a long time. There's been a lot of musical self-doubt and a lot of personal self-doubt. But somehow I, I, I'm still doing it and I'm glad to be doing it. And now my daughter's doing it with me. And she's brought great fresh energy into the whole idea, you know. We wake up here in the house, we take our dog for a walk, and then we go into the city, and then we do this, this strange thing. The, the blues as a genre to me is, is hugely infinite in terms of its genealogy, in terms of its potentiality, in terms of its, you know, its impetus for creative expression. It, it's a huge, the blues is a big word. It, it covers an awful lot of ground culturally and spiritually and musically. It, it's, a, it's a massive thing. Even though I didn't study it or I didn't try to learn it, I never went on to by books of how to play it, or I never tried to learn even a, a blues song from start to finish, but there was an insistence from the format of the three chords, or maybe one chord, and mantra-like repetition that comes from the blues that still absolutely fascinates me today. And it's just a very, very, very large wellspring of music, and of course, the blues has informed rock and roll and jazz and everything. Even paradoxically, such a simple music, with a very complex set of cultural and spiritual musical possibilities. The guitar is probably the most emblematic instrument um, in, let's say, blues music or and rock and roll. You know. It, it's still quite a young instrument historically in terms of the bigger picture of music. The guitar is quite a young instrument. And it's an instrument that's completely always, you know, it's been revolutionized the whole time. There's different guitar builds and different styles. But I think the guitar in its simplicity, you know, the six strings, the wood, the wire, and any form that that takes, I think in its, its very simplicity, there's a great kind of DIY thing with a guitar. You can take it anywhere. You can you can tune it to any chord. You can plug it in, electrify it, and play it acoustic. It appeals to so many people. about blues as a genre guitar is infinite you know it has infinite potential you can, you can play Bach on a guitar as well as you can play John Lee Hooker or you can play an Elvis Presley song or you can play a Ed Sheeran song um, it has so much potential um, you can manifest any kind of music on the guitar my relationship with the guitar when I started playing at Bonnie's age did change everything it changed how I saw the world how it it was like a lens, like a camera. It was, uh, you know, it changed how emotionally I perceived myself and those around me. It changed how I communicated. It shaped my identity, it misshaped my identity, and got me into trouble. It got me out of trouble. Now it feeds me, and it has for the last 15, close to 20 years. Uh, there's, there's so much I could say about the guitar. Um, without talking about the beauty of the things and the aesthetic pleasure that you derive from looking at them and listening to them. My experience of playing roots-based music or blues-based music is that it calls and responds immediately to, to, I think, people of any age. And I know from playing on Grafton Street for so many years that, you know, I've seen a lot, a lot of generations come up and I've taught people that have been kids that would have listened to me on Grafton Street when they were like 12 and then taught them later on in life. And I think it has quite a everlasting connection 
I think people respond to it as it's served, you know, and, and I'm not sure if it's a, a genre that will ever go out of style. People say I live for music, and I can understand why they say that, you know. And there's other things that are perhaps more important, like your your family and, and your well-being and stuff like that. But music is, is it really greases the wheels of what can be a kind of a hard enough life. And to have a life in music, to be involved in music, and to know other musicians and or like my friends, like you know. Oh, when that owns the guitar shop and all the guys, John Guthrie, people that come into that shop and all those relationships that are formed through music. You know, I always say the, the, the brotherhood of the and sisterhood of the wood and wire, the simple two elements, wood and wire, and, and you form these most, most uh, intimate relationships with people through your relationship with music. So evangelizing its own truth and the, makes you question things, it makes you doubt things, it gives you affirmations, it gives you something to work towards. It's a great journey. It's, uh, it's amazing. And the older I get, the, 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 I, I really feel that the, the less I know about it, and, the, and I become more curious and more available to what it's telling me. You know, music will tell me things about myself and life uh, that I could never concoct intellectually, you know. I, I love that about music is that, it, you know, the intellect's an awful demon. It, and you think this and you think that and you concoct these ideas and you build up these concepts. But in music, it's redundant. It's all in the doing, you know, and it's in bringing it out there and, and, and talking to other people with the music not talking from, from your mind, you know. Maybe not always talking from your heart, but definitely from your guts, you know. And, uh, that's the great gift of music. Thank you.